Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, this is a video over equilateral triangles. And now hopefully you know that equilateral triangles are triangles where all the sides are congruent. And so I have a triangle here and I'm indicating that every side is congruent because I have one tick mark on each side. Uh, now if we just look at the word equilateral, equa is equal, lateral is sides, uh, and so we have equal sides. Like a quadrilateral has four sides, lateral means sides. So equilateral triangles, all sides are congruent. Something that you might not know about equilateral triangles are that they're also equiangular. Uh, equiangular, equal angles. So equa is equal, angular is angles. So all the angles are also going to be equal to each other. So if I look here, since these sides uh, are congruent to each other, uh, the angles opposite those sides also have to be equal to each other. And so all these angles are going to be congruent as well. Again, that's what equiangular means. And since I know all the interior angles of a triangle have to equal 180 degrees, I can take the 180 and the fact that these are all equal angles and we have three of them. And if I divide 180 by, by six, sorry, by three, we get 60. And so every single angle inside of an equilateral triangle are all going to be 60 degrees. This is always going to be the case. No matter how big or small the equilateral triangle is, it's also going to have equal angles all the way around it, which we call equiangular. And so I'm going to work two problems now to dealing with uh, the concept that all the sides are equal and all the angles inside of an equiangular or equilateral triangle are 60 degrees. And so here we go. Um, my students came across this problem recently, and so I decided to make a video on it. Uh, we need to find x and y, and we need to find the lengths of AB, BC, and AC. And if you notice, I have an equilateral triangle because all these little tick marks here indicate all the sides are equal. And so my goal is to find x and then find y. And so let's look at the concept of finding x first. Um, I know that these sides are congruent to each other. Uh, since I know this side's congruent to this side, this side's congruent to this side, it doesn't matter. I can just pick any two sides that I want to work with each other and set them equal to each other. Since these are across, I'm just going to set these equal to each other and we will solve for x. And so let's see here. When I solve for x, uh, I'm going to get the x's on one side. And I have a 4x minus 2 equals uh, 6. We're going to add 2 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 8. Divide both sides by 4. And I get x is equal to 2. And so I know x is equal to 2. Now you might be wondering, could I have done uh, 7x minus 2 equals 6x? Yes, you could. You would still get the same thing as x equals 2. You could have also have said, 3x plus 6 is equal to 6x, and you would still get x is equal to 2. And so I just want you to understand, since all these sides are equal to each other, I could have set any of these sides congruent to each other, and I still would have ended up with x equals 2. And so we have x is equal to 2. Now I'm going to use this information now to find each side. I might as well, right? We're talking about x, so let's find it. So we have a 7 times 2, because x is 2, minus 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus 2 is 12. So I know that uh, side AB is 12. This could be 12 inches, could be 12 feet, could be 12 centimeters. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so uh, let's do the same thing here. 3 times 2 plus 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus, plus 6 is also 12. And so right now it's looking good because these sides are congruent to each other, and they should be. And then we have a 6 times 2, which is also 12. And so this is correct because all the sides are congruent to each other. All the sides are going to be 12. Again, this is an equilateral triangle, so this should have happened. If you did not get all the sides equal to each other, then you messed up somewhere solving for x. Now I'm going to clean the board here so I can solve for y without having any issues. Uh, my goal is to solve for y, and how in the world can I do that? I don't have any other angles here. Um, again, we know this is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles are also equiangular. And again, all the angles have to equal 180 degrees, so 180 degrees divided by 3 gets me 60 degrees. So all these angles are 60 degrees. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of equilateral triangle you have, big or small, it's always going to be uh, 60 degrees in all the angles. And so with this information, uh, I needed this to solve the problem. Uh, I know this angle is equal to 60 degrees. It's also equal to 9y minus 3 degrees. I got a little messy there. Let me do that again. 60 degrees equals uh, 9y minus 3. I guess I don't really need the degree marker here. So let's solve for, for y. Uh, let me add 3 to both sides. And I get 63 equals 9y. Let's divide by 9. 
and I get 7 equals y. And so that's what I get for y. y is 7. And again, if you're not very sure, you can always double check. 9 times 7 minus 3. Well, that's 63 minus 3 gets me back to 60, so I know these must be good. Uh, and so this is a, a tricky problem, uh, and uh, unless you know the tricks. Again, we know all the sides are equal, so we, we set the uh, sides equal to each other to solve for x. And we again, we know all the sides are equal, so all the angles have to be equal to 60 as well, because this is an equi equiangular triangle. Let me do one more problem, and we'll call it quits in this video. Uh, it says a triangle DEF is an equilateral triangle, and uh, segment EG is bisecting psi, uh, segment DF find x and find y. Again, this is a problem my students came across recently on a review, uh, and so I figured I might as well make a video on it. Um, now, hmm, bisects might be something you're not uh, very familiar with. Bisect means to cut into two equal parts. And so this little line here, EG, is bisecting the psi DF, and what that means is, is DG is going to be equal to, uh, to GF. And so we're going to use that information a little bit later. Uh, and then again, we also know we have an equilateral triangle, so again, we know all the sides are congruent to each other. Uh, so we know this side is equal to this side, which is equal to this entire side here. Um, but I'm going to ignore that fact for just right now. Um, I'm going to look at the idea that uh, we have an equilateral triangle, which means we also have an equiangular triangle. So we also know that these angles inside the triangle are all equal to 60 degrees. But since this um, segment is bisecting the side, it's also going to bisect the angle. So if I chop 60 degrees and half, then each angle measure here is actually going to be 30 degrees. So let me clean this up a little bit here. Uh, let me make it different, different colors. So this is 30 degrees, and this angle here is also going to be 30 degrees. And so I've kind of built the premise or the idea on how I can start solving for this problem here. Uh, so let me just continue solving for y, and then I'm going to erase this and we'll solve for x. And since we know this angle here is 30 degrees, we also know it's equal to 4y minus 6. Uh, I'm going to do 30 is equal to 4y minus 6. And so uh, let me just solve for y real quick. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. 36 is equal to 4y. Divide by 4. And I have 9 is equal to y. So this is 9. Uh, and again, if you're not sure, 4 times 9 minus 6, 4 times 9 is 36, minus 6 is 30, and so we know, we, we know we're good here. Uh, so let me uh, erase this now and let me solve for x. I did this one last on purpose because it's just going to take up a little space here. So we, um, we, we know we have an equilateral triangle. Uh, we know that uh, DE is equal to DF. Uh, the problem is, is I don't know what DF is equal to right now. Uh, and so I need to use a little bit of information here from earlier, from the, from the given information, to solve for, for DF. Again, we know that EG is bisecting DF, and so we know that DG is going to be equal to GF. So if this is 4x, this segment here also has to be 4x. And if I were to add these two segments together, 4x plus 4x, we know the entire uh, side length of DF is going to be 8x. And again, we have an equilateral triangle, so we know side uh, DE is going to be congruent to side uh, DF, so I can literally just set those guys equal to each other, and that will help me solve for x. So we have 7x plus 5 is going to be equal to uh, 8x. Sorry, this is going a little diagonal here. Let me uh, solve for x here by subtracting 7x on both sides, and I end up with 5 is equal to x. And it's always a good idea to double check. So what is uh, 7 times 5 plus 5? Well, that's 35 plus 5 is 40. Again, this could be 40 feet, uh, 40 inches. It's not 40 degrees like I just did. Uh, sorry about that. Side lengths are not in the degrees. Angles are in degrees. So I have 40 here. And then we have a, an 8 times 5 is also 40. And so since these are equal to each other, uh, it should be because it's an equilateral triangle, then I know that x has to be 5. Anyways, hopefully this helps you understand equilateral triangles a little bit better and equiangular triangles a little bit better. And have a good day. Bye-bye.